spice I'll call Grenada. Why did the revolution all fall apart in 1983? And it, it didn't fall apart all of a sudden. There were several things that took place um, beginning in 1982 into 1983 that led to the events that eventually occurred in uh, on October 19th, 1983. So it wasn't a sudden a part of the Grenada Revolution. It was a gradual build-up of a series of events, um, mistakes, some may argue mistakes too as well, that eventually led to the events of October 19th, 1983. So what happened? So one of the reasons why the revolution fell apart was that momentum had died for the revolution and support for it had fallen. So the revolution um, was a revolution, as I said, it was led by young intellectuals, uh, those who formed the Central Committee, Maurice Bishop, Bernard Code, Unison Whiteman, um, Norris Bain, um, Jacqueline Kreft, etc. These were all young intellectuals. There were many young intellectuals who were the, the minds and the brains behind of the Grenada Revolution. And they were able to gather mass support of uh, ordinary Grenadians across the entire island supporting the revolution. Maurice Bishop was a, a, a dynamic leader, very popular leader of the people. And through his leadership, they were able to maintain a certain amount of momentum in the revolution. Um, from 1979, I would say, to 1981, there was great momentum. Lots of initiatives were started. We had um, parish and zonal councils going. There was the work of the National Women's Organization led by Bernard Scott's wife, uh, Phyllis Scott. She was the head of the National Women's Organization along with several other women. They were leading that and that was a big initiative with over 7,000 women involved in that organization. So there was lots of momentum in the early years of the revolution. However, after some time, that momentum began to die. People got wary. Um, they didn't have the same um, passion and fervor um, to continue um, with the momentum needed to keep the revolution going. Uh, that was driven by several factors. Um, things had changed, right? Things had changed. Um, Grenada was now seen as an example um, as a communist, uh, a socialist state. Uh, so that meant that uh, Maurice Bishop spent lots of time outside of Grenada giving speeches and uh, meeting with um, potential allies. Uh, he visited the U.S., he visited Canada, he went to Cuba, he went to Europe, speaking about what had taken place in Grenada and the success of the Grenada Revolution. So he um, he spent... As Prime Minister, he spent lots of time outside of the country and left the internal affairs of the country to uh, the Central Committee, which was led, led by um, Bernard Code, who was the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Trade and Planning at the time, and other members of the Central Committee, including the late Hudson Austin, Unison Whiteman, etc. So these people formed the Central Committee. So a little bit of a maybe uh, a mis I would say a mistake um, in terms of uh, not being able to keep the momentum going and being split between having to maintain um, international allies and as well as maintaining the domestic affairs of the country. That balance wasn't well kept. So it meant in turn, inside of the country, the people were left without their leader, right? Maurice Bishop had been their leader. They, they, they respected him greatly as, his lead, as their leader. So 
this is one of the main reasons that the momentum died for the revolution and there wasn't enough a, a lot of support as when it was started in 1979 all right so that was one of the reasons um why it all fell apart not one of the main reasons but definitely that was the atmosphere at the time people were not feeling as enthusiastic about uh the revolution as they had been when gary was overthrown in 1979 remember the the overthrowing of of, of gary uh was a climax right it had been many many years of um oppression by the giri regime and what the mongols gang was doing that eventually led to the march 13th so it was a build up and a climax of an overthrow right so that lasted several years beyond 1979 but the momentum needed to keep that going uh it was difficult to keep so that's one of the, the, the reasons why it all fell apart. Again, leave a comment. Um, leave a comment. Uh, if you want to share anything, please leave a comment. What else was happening during that period? Um, what was beginning to happen was that a realization that um, they could not achieve everything that uh, was started. So when they the People's Revolutionary Government, the PRG, um, entered into government in, in 1979. They started many, many initiatives. They had, they wanted to do housing, they wanted to improve infrastructure, they wanted to do agriculture reform, they wanted to do um, things by educational transformation. So they had many initiatives that they were started. That, that they wanted to do and some had already started. And there were some that were started, they were unable to deliver on them, right? So they, they wanted to build a new harbor in, in, in Kariku. That project never took off. They wanted to, uh, to in, in, increase or improve electricity by um, having new generators added to the electricity company at the time, which would have been Grenlec. Uh, they wanted to many more things they wanted to do around lowering the cost of living and improving road infrastructure. But they weren't able to do all they had set out to do initially when the revolution had started. Right. So there was some disappointment there, um, which also contributed to the, the lower momentum, the inability to, to deliver on several of the initiatives and several of the projects that they had promised the Grenadian people that they were going to do, right? Um, they basically took on too much, right? They took on too much and they did not have enough fuel essentially uh, to do all the things that they wanted to do. Um, and with any, with any government, anytime these things start happening you know in terms of failure to deliver it's always a, a cause for criticism and also a, a, a cause that can lead to the downfall of, of any regime right so same similarly here with the prg government they had issues of being able to uh, implement several of the initiatives and to get some of the projects that they had promised really going and this affected, of course, um, the momentum and keeping support, right? So that too was taking place, had taken place between 1982 to 1983. As I said, it was all a buildup, right? Um, it wasn't one thing that led to the end of the, the, the revolution and the events of October 19th, but several um, events, several mistakes that... Um, led up to that to the point again it's just a picture that showing one thing was um the revolution had lots of support of uh ordinary working class grenadians um that was one of the one of the in the early days um this was one of their strong points the support of the masses um this was one of the strong points 
And uh, within within uh, Grenada itself, there were also several, uh, there were some feelings. There were some feelings that everybody was happy with what was taking place. Um, one of the uh, maybe unintended things that uh, maybe the PRG did not see at the time, but definitely it was felt on the ground, was that um, the revolution had brought in many foreigners into the country. So they had, there were Cubans who were helping to build the international airport at Point Salines. Uh, there were also Venezuelans helping on different projects, uh, member, people from the Soviet Union. So many foreigners um, who came um, and was helping in many different areas to support the revolution initiatives. So some people felt that there were too many foreigners on the island and um, the revolution had brought a foreign takeover of Grenada, which was not, which had not been, which was not supposed to be, essentially, which was not supposed to be that there would be this um, huge uh, number of foreigners on the island um, working in different uh, initiatives um, as part of the the revolution, right? So this this was an area of discomfort for some Grenadians who felt that there were too many foreigners on island and it was not something that they had signed up for um, in support of the uh, the revolution, right? So there were some feelings there. And again, now we come to the uh, one of the main, the main, main reasons um, that eventually led to the um, events of October nineteenth, nineteen eighty-three. So, in this picture here, we have um, Bernard Code. That's this gentleman here in the glasses. This is Bernard Code, and this over here is um, Morris Bishop. So Bernard Code and Maurice Bishop, they had had a long history um, dating back way before they became engaged in uh, around in the 1970s leading up to the 1979 revolution. So just a little bit about both Maurice Bishop and Bernard Code, but more Bernard Code because I already shared um, in earlier programs about Maurice Bishop. But Bernard Code, uh, he was a, a Grenadian, um, originally from the parish of um, St. Max. Um, he grew up in Victoria, St. Max. Um, he attended the Grenada Boys Secondary School. So he's a, he was, or he, he's still alive. So he's an GBSS old boy. And, um, it was during his secondary school days at GBSS when he uh, he met Maurice Bishop for the first time. They were part of a, a group which Maurice Bishop had founded. Um, so that group, um, they did speeches in the market square, etc., um, and really massed together. Um, young secondary school students to um in debates and and giving speeches and so forth so that's where these two gentlemen first met maurice bishop and bernard code um bernard code would go on to study economics so he uh he left grenada and went to the united states and studied uh economics so he had both a bachelor's and i believe a master's degree in economics whereas uh, morris bishop of course he was a lawyer he was uh, he went to school in the university at the university of london uh where he achieved his uh his legal education so upon return uh to grenada morris bishop returned to grenada in um 1973 um Bernard Code would return to Grenada uh, a few years after uh, Maurice Bishop did. And then they, they were reunited through the um NGM. So that's the, the new jewel movement. Jewel, the first part of Jewel, of course, Unison Whiteman was the original founder of Jewel, whereas Maurice Bishop had MAP, 
um that was his organization and they joined together to form ngm or the new jewel movement so it was around that period of time in the uh before 1976 when these two gentlemen again were reunited under the ngm and um eventually became the the Maurice Bishop, the leader, and um, Bernard Code would become the deputy prime minister um, during the People's Revolutionary Government. But as I said, their history together dates back to uh, the secondary school years, right? Many people associated who remember the revolution and many um, books have documented that it was Bernard Code who was the brainchild of the revolution. Um, he was the intellectual. Um, he was the one who had all the ideas and was the brain behind of many of the initiatives started under the revolution. And Maurice Bishop was the front. He was the popular leader, the charismatic, charming leader who the people loved. And it was this dynamic between the two men that um, in some ways ended up being the what led to the events of October 19th, 1983. Of course, that's one version of um, their dynamics, right? But these two gentlemen were the front um, of the Grenada Revolution and it's also the reason for the end of it. So what happened? So in September 1983, uh, the Central Committee, as I said, the Central Committee, there wasn't a formal government. The People's Revolutionary Government was not a formal government. There was no constitution. The constitution had been uh, dissolved, right? So what they had was a body that served almost like parliament, but there was no parliament because there was no formal government, right? The, the decision-making body became the Central Committee. That's how it was under the, the PRG. So in September 1983, a motion or a proposal was brought towards the Central Committee of the idea of a joint leadership or a co-leadership between Maurice Bishop and Bernard Code. So before that period of time, Maurice Bishop was the prime minister. He was the only leader or the maximum leader. So maximum leader um, is the model that um, Cuba had under Fidel Castro, right? Whereby there is only one leader, that leader makes all the decisions, right? But this idea in 1983 of joint leadership or co-leadership would change the dynamics of the PRG so that Maurice Bishop was no longer the maximum leader and Grenada following the, the political governance model used by Cuba in their communist socialist state, but to move towards a joint leadership, whereby both Maurice Bishop and Bernard Code would be joint leaders, right? So the country would have two leaders or two heads of government. So that was the proposal that was brought um, towards the central uh, to the central committee for a decision in September 1983. Um, Bishop, he had origin, he had initially supported the idea that he and Bernard could become co-leaders. Um, so at that central committee meeting, he agreed. He agreed that yes, um, they would that this proposal he would accept for him and, Mar and Bernard Code to become joint leaders. Um, after that meeting, it was early in September uh, 1983, where there was that initial meeting, Maurice Bishop um, traveled for about several weeks, about two to three weeks, he left Grenada. And of course he was always traveling, he was attending meetings. Um, so, 
he traveled as per normal. Um, he visited um, Europe and he also made a stop in Cuba. The very last stop he made before returning to Grenada um, was in Cuba. It is believed that in Cuba, he would have um, visited with uh, Fidel Castro, the prime minister at the time of Cuba, and discussed the, the, this joint leadership, and that Fidel Castro was opposed to joint leadership because he had maximum leader model being used. He was the only leader. He never um, went the route of joint leadership. So upon Maurice Bishop's return, in early October um, 1983, he changed his mind that he no longer supported a joint leadership for him and Bernard Coe to be joint leaders and that his preference was for a maximum leader model, the same model that Cuba had with one leader, one prime minister. So, this essentially became drove basically the events that eventually led to October 13th when Maurice Bishop was placed under house arrest. Right? So he was placed under house arrest by a fraction of those who supported a Bernard Code and his quest for joint leadership. Right, so internal the central committee, the, the days leading up even to the house arrest, there was many meetings, many discussions about this joint leadership and Maurice Bishop backing away from supporting the, the joint leadership in favor of a maximum leader model. So, so internally there was conflict. To sum it up nicely, there was conflict within the PRG over leadership. That was the basis of what led to the events of October 19th. Conflict over leadership of the government. So on October 13th, uh, Maurice Bishop was placed under house arrest. So the prime minister's house was in was located. Or is still the ruins of it is still today at Mount Welldale. So he was placed under house arrest there. He stayed under house arrest for six days. Um, so October thirteenth to October nineteenth, he was placed under house arrest in his own house in Mount at Mount Welldale. Right. So was placed under house arrest by um, the code fraction of the PRG government that was in support of the joint leadership model. So on October 19th was the fateful day of the events, which you would um, speak about towards the end of the program but this is basically is the, the 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 main reason that brought about the end of the grenada revolution this whole joint leadership and the quest for to move away from having maurice bishop as the the only leader the prime minister in favor of our joint leadership and there's many thoughts about this some people in Grenada at the time they were um they felt that Maurice Bishop um while he was charismatic the people loved him etc. Some people viewed him as being coming uh, reckless. He was a womanizer. He wasn't focusing on the on the uh, revolution as before. He had become distracted. He was outside of the country too much. Right. So for these various reasons. Some became in favor of having a, 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 a joint leadership or co-leadership with Bernard Code also being leader and, and supporting supporting them having two leaders. If Grenada did, really did go to having two leaders, that itself would be history across the world. I don't think there's any place that has joint leadership model as a political governance structure where you have two leaders, right? It is most uh, common to have one leader, 
one prime minister, president, uh, head of state, whatever the country calls it, right? Um, depending on the political, whether you're democracy or whether you're um, parliamentary democracy following the Westminster style model like you have in Grenada or you have the Trinidad model, etc., which is more republic. Um, but nowhere in the world joint leadership, right? So that itself would have been a force to have that kind of model of leadership in our country. So let's take a break and uh, we'll be right back to continue more about why it all ended on October 19th, 1983. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Right, so we are back. So we're talking about why it all ended on October 19th, 1983. So in this picture here, we have at the very left, we had the late Hudson Austin. We have Maurice Bishop in the middle and Bonnard Code towards the, the, the far right there, right? So um, on October 19th, the morning of October 19th, um, there was a... Um, Maurice Bishop, of course, he, he was on house and rest at his house on Mount Welldale. And he was, the, the plan was for him to meet with George Lewison, um, who was a member, of course, of the Central Committee, again, to talk about this whole joint leadership and to really to, to try to convince uh, Maurice that this was the best way for the PRG to go towards joint leadership meeting. What uh, the Bonal Code fraction of the PRG did not realize was that elsewhere throughout Grenada, um, the masses led by many, many hundreds of young people, young students, young students of St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, young students within secondary schools in the St. George's area, um, nurses, etc. Um, it started in Grenville, um, led by um, Sylvia Belma. She was a young student at the time, and as well as uh, Vincent Noel, who was uh, a key player. He he died on October 19th. Um, they gathered um, hundreds of people, um, brought them to St. George's via bus buses, and hundreds of people gathered um, at the Market Square. Market Square, many children, um, they went to school and did not stay in school that morning. They arrived at school and left the school compound and headed down to the Market Square, where there was this big crowd of young uh, Grenadians gathered, um, advocating, calling out for Morris Bishop to be freed, right? No bishop, no revolution. That was the slogan being chanted, no bishop, no revolution, right? So um, this mass of people left Market Square, and headed up to Mount Welldale. And folks who don't know where Mount Welldale is, that is right up on, um, you know where GBN is today, that's up there, Mount Welldale, right? So look at street up there, right? So they left the market square and headed up to Mount Welldale because they were going in search of their leader, Maurice Bishop. Um, rumors had spread that he was being held under house arrest at his residence in Mount Welldale. So the masses left the market square and headed up to Mount Welldale. When they arrived there, they met that gate and uh, 
uh, soldiers were prevented them from coming into the compound and um, eventually um, the demonstrators in masses um, they stood outside there chanting of course no bishop no revolution and eventually uh, Morris Bishop was released from house arrest um, they had no choice they had no choice those who had kept him put him on the house arrest they had because of the presence of the masses and so forth they had no choice but to release Morris Bishop so he was released from after six long days of being house arrest with no food no etc he was released and the accounts do show indicate that he was taken from mount welldale and the mass of people made their way up to fort rupert or fort george right so he was taken in a some accounts say it was a van others say it was a car um it depends it depends right but um he was he was taken by means of transport and of course a huge crowd of young people many school children from mount welldale to fort um rupert it was morris bishop who made the call for fort rupert to go there and the reason he wanted to go there was basically because um after six days of house arrest he he he, he needed medical attention so um the hospital was located on fort george so he as well as the the office or the the headquarters of the prg uh was located um on fort george or fort rupert so that was the two reasons he wanted to go there after house arrest was to get medical attention and to be um located in the headquarters that's where radio free grenada was so uh he could have sent a message out a uh, radio free grenada was the communication channel used by the prg throughout the years of the government uh there were the phone lines were so you he could be able to call for international assistance everything so that's the reason why the decision was made to go to fort rupert of Fort George on that fateful morning, October 19th, 1983. So uh, the massive crowd with Maurice Bishop, um, Jacqueline Kreff was also with him. She had been, um, she was also with him um, and they headed up to, to Fort Rupert. So it was, there they were inside the operations room, um, at Fort Rupert at the headquarters of the PRG when um, bullet shots exploded and began the events that led to the death of Maurice Bishop, uh, several of his comrades that were with him and uh, hundreds of Grenadians who, who threw themselves over Fort George uh, Clifton and, and, and it led to their death, right? So uh that was the october 19th um day right um it began with the freeing of maurice bishop from house arrest and eventually um the assassination where maurice bishop and several of his cabinet ministers were lined up and they were killed execution style um so it's a very was well, very tragic day um and a tragic end to the events of the grenada revolution all the success it had brought but that it had ended in such a, a dim light with uh the the, the 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 leader being killed right so so another reason uh why why it all ended and i would have touched on this again there was never true democracy the prg government was never a uh, really a democratic government um they were not recognized across the re region or even the world as a formal government structure they there was what is called a de facto government and that made them 
um, come under scrutiny, especially uh, by the U.S., who was kept close eyes to what was taking place in Grenada at the time. And again, as, as I said, there was no constitution. The constitution was revoked um, when the overthrow took place in 1979, right? And that was has been said as one of the main mistakes of the Grenada Revolution, right? That they did not, Maurice Bishop, did not um, seek to reconstitute the constitution, right? It was revoked, dissolved, and no efforts the constitution is essentially the body of rules that govern any country and any country usually has a constitution um that is in operation and that's a key part of, of having democracy so without a constitution it means that there is no rules that govern how the country um should be and that was what really one of the the mistakes made um by the uh Maurice Bishop um, in his governance, that he never really pushed to have the constitution reconstituted and really call elections and solidify himself formally as the prime minister of Grenada from 1979, right, to 1983, right? Had he called elections, the people voted him through the democratic process, etc., the outcome today would have been probably would have been different, right? So that was one of the mistakes made, right? That there was there was no dem the democratic process never never occurred, right? No elections was called. Yes, you overthrow the government, but the next logical step should have been to call an election, let the people vote you in as prime minister and um formally become the government of Grenada at the time right so it was a, a real blunder made and uh it eventually led to this whole co joint leadership proposal etc which would not have been had it been uh elect elections and a democratic process so And again, this is the so part of the the um, part of the story that uh, still today that needs to be told a lot more. That during the period 1979 to 1983, hundreds of Grenadians were detained at Richmond Hill Prison. So that is something that we don't uh, hasn't been told. Those stories haven't been told, but there were many people, many men especially who were detained, right? And for several reasons. Either it was believed that they were planning to overthrow Maurice Bishop and the PRG. So if there were rumors about you, um, that was reason for them to detain you. Also, if um, you were associated with any persons who were believed to be anti-PRG, those were also reasons why you were detained. So hundreds of Grenadians were detained, um, and those detainees, uh, they were kept in very poor conditions. Uh, a couple of them died, and it really, outside of Grenada, it raised a lot of concern about human rights violations. Amnesty International, which is the body for um, protection of human rights, they became involved too as well because of the detainees that were being kept in Richmond Hill under such poor conditions for being anti um without real cause right it was all suspicion about people being opposed to the PRG or being associated with those involved in anti PRG work right so it was again a downside um that have not been told um, and these are stories that probably need to be told of these people who were kept in prison from the period 1979 to 1983. Even our former Prime Minister um, Tillman Thomas, he did his course of time in prison, um, detained during the years of the, the Grenada Revolution, right? Um, him and Leslie Pierre, etc., they had started a newspaper and... Um, 
one of the things the PRG was good at was suppressing the press. Right, so um, the Voice newspaper was started during the years of the Grenada Revolution. There was also the Torchlight newspaper, and all these newspapers became suppressed. Even the uh, Catholic Church started the Catholic Focus newspaper, and that too, the PRG wanted to suppress. So there was real suppression of the media, right, which is never good, right, to suppress freedom of speech. Uh, so, Maurice Bishop, that was again uh, one of the mistakes that they made. The suppression of the media, people not being able to, to speak out and write freely about what was happening in the country at the time. Right? So, again, a, a mistake. And as I said, I already spoke about the events of October 19th, 1983. Um... And before we wrap up today, in terms of the program today, of course, um, these were those um, that history has told us formerly were those who died on October 19, 1983. Of course, there are many others who died um, that uh, we don't have their names, right? But Maurice Bishop, he was the prime minister. He was killed. Uh, Norris, Norris Bain. Uh, Fitzroy Bain, Evelyn Maitland, Jacqueline Kreff, Vincent Noel, um, Unison Whiteman, and Keith Healing were those who were executed on Fort Rupert on October 19th, 1983. Um, and many others were injured through shots. Even um, um, Anne Peters, who was the head of the hospital at the time, she was shot in her shoulder. She was one of the nurses who were aiding um, in providing medical care to Maurice Bishop because he was so um, drained after the six days of house arrest. She was shot. Um, Sylvia um, Belmar and Gemma um, who were young, 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 young women um, who had led um, the masses to match towards Mount Welldale. Um, Gemma was killed. She was killed uh, in the operations room. Once they started firing inside there, she was killed. Um, so many, many others died on that day, October 19th, 1983. History says that the first shots were fired at around 1 30 p.m. and uh, it followed several hours of um shooting and people jumping off the, the, the that full charge etc to their deaths right so it was really a really chaotic chaotic tragic fatal day in grenada's in grenada's history um and of course um full support of acknowledging that day and making that day a holiday um so important right it, it is the day the october 25th was when the u.s invaded right but the october 19th for us as grenadians the october 19th is the tragedy um that's the most heartfelt uh that has to be recognized um so hudson austin his name um, goes down in the history books because following the events on October 19th, it was his voice that Grenadians heard on Radio Free Grenada, right? So he gave the first speech announcing the death of Maurice Bishop on the afternoon of October 19th and immediately placing Grenada under 24-hour curfew, right? So that's the late Hudson Austin, right? Commander of Chief of the People's Revolutionary Army, the PRA, it was called at the time. So it was his voice that Grenadians heard acknowledging. There were rumors, of course, but it was his voice that they heard acknowledging that Maurice Bishop had been killed but also that the country was going to be placed under 24-hour um, curfew, um, not also curfew, 
uh, with people only get, being given four hours uh, each day to go out to get groceries, etc. But the country was basically under curfew or curfew, as as is as history records it, right? So, um, and Grenada remained under those curfew days until the morning of October twenty fifth, where Grenadians are woke to um helicopters over their head and the US military presence on island. Right? So let's take a break and uh we'll be back to wrap up the program today. Give me let me find my cook um thing here. Sometimes it gets finicky, but we'll take a break. Um, thank you for everyone who's viewing the program. And we're going to take a break here shortly. And sorry. Spice out, call Grenada.